everyone, it's Amethyst Rainwitch here and today I'm going to be talking to you about wands. The, a bit about the history of it and how they have come to be in more mainstream witchcraft but also about how you can use it within your own craft if you want to. So wands can play quite a pivotal, prominent role, not pivotal role, a prominent role in spells and rituals because they can be used um, to direct your energy but they can also be used to cast a circle especially if you're just starting out it's very good for those who are just starting to use a wand you don't have to use a wand but it's a possibility it's it's a choice you know um it it's traditionally associated with the f element of fire and is associated with the element of fire in the tarot suit. I'll talk, be talking about tarot um, in future episodes. Um, sorry. Um, but because of how directional it can be, I associate wands more with air because to me swords they're more destructive it can, it can be a, a force for good but it's more destructive so that's why I sort of see it more as air now a large staff can be used instead of a wand but it can also be used as well as a wand. So you can interchange the two depending on what your spell ritual calls for. Now, traditionally, a wand is made of wood, um, but it doesn't have to be. You can find in a lot of the more witchy shops, you can find uh, crystal wands. You can, you know, especially if, you, if you're a fan of a particular um, set of books or films, you will also find um, resin, metal. Um, my wand is actually not a character wand, but it is from, it's inspired by, and I, I quite like my little wand. I say little. It's fairly wide, you know, but this, this is mine. I haven't actually properly used it yet. Um, I'm thinking of maybe using it in my next ritual that I'm doing with a group of friends. Um, but, you know, th this is just my wand. I am looking into maybe getting a wooden a wood wand but I'm not sure about that yet um, if I do get one I will post it on my Instagram and page yes Instagram and my Facebook page so I'll put the links down below so you can have a look see at what I do with those um, now there are traditional woods you know apple is very much associated with fertility and venus lots of love it can also be used when working with the fae the fae folk the fair folk um we've got ash i think i need to do i might do a video next week next week's video might be all about traditional woods that you can use for your wand um you, you know there's apple ash oak there's holly i know holly's more of a a bush a shrub but it can still be used because um especially if you're wiccan there's the whole holly and oak king so oak's another one um obviously but there's holly as well um you've got maple cherry willow hazel birch um i'm sure i've seen another one but pretty much pick a tree you can get a wand from it now there is a there's sort of a, a a way of asking a tree 
for a wand. So if you've got a favourite tree, you can go up to it and ask. You know, you can go up to it. I'd recommend meditating for at least five minutes with the tree and um, meditate on the intent of asking the tree for a wand, for its blessing for a wand. You'll get a feeling of whether or not you get that um, blessing for the wand. Um, but, you know, you can then go ahead and either pick a fallen uh, branch, you know, a branch that's fallen off in from, um, you know, because it's, it was that branch's time to be removed from the tree. In some cases, you can go along and take a knife with you, you know, just a little knife, just so you can take a, a just the one. I, I wouldn't recommend taking several branches, just take the one and then you can, you know, you're not taking more than you need, which is quite a priority. So there's that that you can do. Um, I have seen a shop in the UK that does wood ones, which is what I'm currently looking into. If I do get one, I will do a thing because I'm also looking into some other things some other witchy things from them. Um, you can all, you can make your own one. So once you've got your, your branch, your, your twig, your stick, you know, once you've got it, you can, you know, if you are adept at it or you want to sort of roughly, you know, create a handle, you know, a, a nicer, smoother handle, you can, you know, create it. You know, they don't have to be ones that you've made so you don't have to have a handmade wand you can use one like I do um, they are believe handmade or homemade ones are believed to be to hold more power especially for that particular witch um, but it is you know if you don't if you don't believe that that's absolutely fine I personally don't because in this modern age that we live in we don't have you know the tools and the know-how and the knowledge that we would have than we that, that our ancestors might have done to be able to go and make our own um so there's no right or wrong way to get a wand to acquire a wand. You don't have to have a wand. So if you don't want one, but you just want to learn about wands, that's fine. So, you know, it's, you don't have to have one. I have had this now for oh, three and a half years. Three and a half years I've had this, just over, possibly. Um, but about three and a half years I've had this and I've only just started using it or I've only just started thinking about using it. Um, but that is how it goes. You don't have to use one. You can have one, but not use it because you want to have, you know, you might have that feeling of you want one, but then you don't necessarily need to use it. Um, but if you, one thing I should mention is that if you are taking, using a branch from a tree, be sure that it is completely dried out. Um, otherwise there could be creepy crawlies and weird and wonderful things happening. Um, but let's get into the history. Um, so they were possibly used by prehistoric people from, you know, 2000 plus years ago. Um, rods were found with the Red Lady of Paviland in South Wales and uh, she's a prehistoric um, lady although I do believe that she may actually have been a he so you know either way whether it's a female or a male it was used they were found with her um, in Egypt ones 
were frequently made from the tusks of a hippo, um, primarily used to invoke the hippo goddess of childbirth, Tawaret, Tawaret, sorry, it's W and an R, they never mix with me. Um, because they, they were primarily used for, um, you know, that, that sort of ritualistic cutting of the cord. Because I think that's quite a ritual in itself. That's a separate thing though. Um, but the use fades, the use of these hippo uh, tusk ones fades from about 1550 BC so we're talking what 1550 that's three and a half thousand years ago three and a half thousand years ago the um, ancient Egyptians started to stop using them these things things come and go you know it's it's how things happen in the world um, But they are mentioned in things like the Greek, the great Greek, um, I don't know what to call them, they're like authors. So um, Homer mentions them in the Iliad and the Odyssey and they are used by three gods, well one god, two goddesses. So Hermes used a wand called Caduceus to make people sleep or wake them up. Um, Athena used hers to make Odysseus old and then young again. And Circe used hers to turn <laughs> Odysseus's men into pigs. I wonder if that's where the phrase men of pigs come from. Hey, you never know. Um, but by the first, so about 1900 years ago, the wand was a very common symbol of magic within Roman groups. Um, I want to call them cults, but I'm not entirely sure that that is what they should be called. Um, I could be very, very wrong there. Um, <laughs> so it was... You know, the use in Egypt had started to fade, but they'd, you know, become more popular in, in, you know, the Roman Italy, as it was, because by the third and fourth centuries, wands were qu were frequently depicted on the sarcophagus of Jesus, um, where he was using. The wand to perform the miracles like raising Lazarus from the dead or feeding the the multitudes you know we always say 5,000 but the numbers not given <laughs> um, Italian fairy tales from the Middle Ages um, have said that wands were used by very powerful fairies um, but in the 1200s, a Latin grimoire called the Oathbound Book of Honorius. Um, that's where the idea of using wands in the occult within witchcraft um, was really introduced because it incorporated, not only that, it also used um, it, the idea from the Oathbound book of Honorius was also incorporated into the Key of Solomon's grimoire from the 1500s, which became a really popular book for occultists for hundreds of years, and to some people, still is. You know, I mean. In 1888, it was uh, translated into English by a Samuel Mathers. Now he's he he's coming back, um, and this translation of the Key of Solomon's 
is what inspired Gerald Gardner um, to incorporate the wand into wicker as well as other ritual objects so you know there's a few other things that are incorporated into wicker because of the key of solomon's and because of the oathbound book of honorius you know the, there's connections going back through history but samuel mathers was the co-founder of the hermetic order of the golden dawn and he took inspiration from the writings of Eliphas Levi, who was an 1850s occultist author. So he was very, you know, Victorian style. And everything, pretty much apart from the cup, was mentioned in the Key of Solomon's. The cup was taken from the tarot deck. So the cup is the only thing, the cup or the chalice, is the only thing that's not mentioned in there. It's not remotely seen, it's not really seen as um, a witchy thing um, until Samuel Mathers. But it was taken from the tarot. So the tarot was in some way you know, part of the occult and part of all of that. However, Samuel Mathers didn't truly translate the Key of Solomon's. Some of it was fake. If it wasn't all fake. Now, I'm not, I haven't read it. I haven't read the original. I haven't read a true uh, translation of the Key of Solomon's but I might do in the future but as it stands um, apparently um, his fake um, extract you know he took a bit of the Hebrew version um, of the Key of Solomon's and used it for inspiration within the Hermetic Order of Golden Dawn um, but particularly regarding the wands, because he had the lotus wand as a very important wand, along with the fire wand. Um, they do use the, gold, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, do use different wands for different um, rituals and purposes within their ceremonial magic. They're very much a ceremonial order. But the most prominent are the fire and lotus ones. Now, that's one order. In Wicca, ones are normally used to cast circles, call in directions, summon and control angels or genies or, you know, other entities. But it's now generally spell casting i mean it's not the whole you know you know it's not harry potter stuff but it's it's not far off it's just the directions there it's just not the actual instantaneous poof of magic it's not all that you know um they are traditionally, as I said before, they are traditionally associated with fire. But for me, that's more a sort of bladed object. Um, so I associate them with air. However, you can have a wand for every element if you really want one. And you feel called to have that. You know, it's... It's very much up to you whether you have a wand, whether you don't have a wand, you don't have to have one, you don't have to have one like mine, you can, you know, go and find a stick and use it as a wand if that is what you want to do. You know, no one's saying that you can't do that, um, but it is, I mean, you can decorate them as you like. I am very much debating on 
painting the blue. I don't mind blue, but I prefer purple. Um, but yeah, no, they can, they can be ready made. I mean, ones are still, you know, ones are very much all about power. It's whether it's directing it, you know, summoning it from within, you know, because how powerful do you feel? Would you, you know, theoretically, if you imagine yourself standing holding a wand, how powerful would you feel? I mean, I'm sort of waving this around to have something to do with my hands because. I fidget um, but how much more powerful could you potentially feel if you had a bond um, but if you look at you know the the if you look at the ceremonial things that happen in the UK there are still ones of office that are used you know, you see, that, you know, they're on that cushion that's being, you know, the tasseled cushion and it's, you know, big ornate thing, but it's a wand of office so that the person holding it, there's a transfer of power. So I can see the logic of where that comes in and it's like, the mundane people, and I will borrow this word, the muggles of this world. Um, I wonder where they borrowed it from. That idea of power. And sorry, I just got distracted by looking at my kitten. She's not a kitten anymore, she's over a year old. She's nearly a year and a half old. Nearly 18 months old. She's curled up on my chair. And I keep looking and she, she's looking at me and she's sort of tired so she's got one eye closed and one eye open and she keeps looking at me it's because she's curled up on my chair and she knows I'm going to want the chair back but that's a separate thing um, but yes so wands it's your choice you don't have to have one you can have any kind of wand you want you can have a really heavily decorated wand you could have a wand with nothing on it at all that's you know just pure wood you know you can have a wand like i do you have this kind of wand it, you can have a crystal wand it's and it doesn't matter what kind of crystal that's up to you you know it's completely your choice so i hope i've given you um, some things to think about with um, the idea of wands and using wands in your practice and a little bit about the history um, I will do a post next week on the various woods and their associations so that should be fun um, so I will see you next week for the different types of wood wands or wand woods I will call it I shall see you next week stay safe everyone love and peace